Hey, what's up? It's Chris here from Chris's Sci-Fi Reactions. Today, we're back with another Buffy the Vampire. This is Season 1, Episode 2, called Some Assembly Required. Um, yeah, last episode, enjoyed it. We really got introduced um, to the characters again after the end of Season 1. Um, Buffy's experience from the Master and way they sort of uh, portrayed her PTSD was good. I like that. Whether I liked that just in one episode, I might have liked to have seen it spread out a little bit more, which they may do, but I get the feeling that they're just going to move straight on uh, from that. Uh, I don't think there's much more to be said. I'm hoping the audio works better on this. Um, the other day I recorded Smallville and the audio just turned out so crap because I had my fan on, I think. So I'm hoping that this audio is a lot better. I think the the full uncut unedited reaction is available on Patreon listed in the description below and let's just get straight on into this. Fine. Some of us have a ton of trig homework waiting. Hey. <gasps> is this a bad time? Are you crazy? You don't just sneak up on people in a graveyard. You make noise when you walk. You stomp or yodel. I heard you were in the hunt. I'm supposed to be, but Lazy Bones here doesn't want to come out and play. When you first wake up, it's a little disorienting. He'll show. It's weird to think of you going through that. It's weird to go through. So, uh, you're here alone? Yeah. Why? I just thought you'd have somebody with you. Xander. Vampires don't get jealous. In his series. Why don't we fight? You always bring up the vampire. Well, I didn't come here to fight. <laughs> What's my stake? I know it. It takes more than that to get rid of me. <laughs> oh. You okay? Fine. <laughs> Gee, I wish people wouldn't leave open graves laying around like this. So. Oh. Another vampire has risen tonight. I don't think so. Look at those tracks. Whoever was buried here didn't rise from this grave. Okay, so some assembly required, are they? My guess is we're looking at a Frankenstein type episode. She's dragged. Smile. Hey. Oh, look at those legs. No, thank you. Knock <laughs> it off. Hey, Chris. Hey. Oh, I, I, I think the one that's taking the photos is this. the one Why? that's taking the body. Because every year you in a sarcastic way. Body count competition this year. She wasn't killed by vampires. Somebody did dig up her corpse. Ew. Why is it that every conversation new people have has the word corpse in it? Okay, so we got a body snatcher. What does that mean? Here's what I've come up with. Demons who eat the flesh of the dead to absorb their souls. Or it could obviously be a, a voodoo practitioner. You mean Wouldn't making a technically zombie? the soul have left uh, the body more like when they're dead? Uh, for most traditional purposes, a voodoo priest would require more than one. So we should see if the other girls from the accident are AWOL too. And we can figure out what this creep has in mind if we know whether or not... I'm really hoping blind. to get a... So we dig know, up like some graves. Like he was acting all jealous and he wouldn't even admit it. Jealous of what? Xander. Because you did that sexy dance with him? Am I ever gonna lift that down? Nope. Anyway, he was being totally irrational. Love makes you do the large cheers. Practice. Okay. I'd be a bit hesitant to open a potentially occupied casket as well. Not sure I could do it. Hello? I'm looking for Buffy. Buffy? 
Wouldn't Why surprise me. Why would I have the trouble to dig up three girls only to chop them up and throw them away? It doesn't make any sense, especially from a time management standpoint. Well, what I saw didn't add up to three whole girls. I think they kept some parts. Could this get yuckier? They probably kept the other parts to eat. Question answered. Why do you suppose the remains five miles from the cemetery to a school of all places? Maybe because whoever did it had some business in the neighborhood. Like, like going say, to classes? School. Oh. Ah. This was no hatchet job. Whoever made those incisions really knew what they were doing. Yes, really. What student here is going to be that well versed in physiology? I can think of five or six guys in the science club. Jeez. Can make me feel this way, my girl. These guys Talking could do with some serious girl. psychological my help. How's my baby? She's not your baby. She's not gonna be anybody's baby if we don't finish her soon. I'm working on it. So am I, friend. So am I. and we'll grab a bite to eat on the way if you like. How do you feel about Mexican? Pretty good. Okay. okay. And then whatever it is you want to tell me, you can just tell me then, okay? Okay. Uh, tonight, then. It's lucky. We can't just keep waiting around for another lucky accident to drop ahead in our laps. You know what we have to do. Turn into murderers? Just one lousy girl. I won't do it. I, I can't kill anyone. When you brought me back, you promised you'd take care of me. I need this, Chris. I need someone. Please don't ask me to do this. Don't, don't. My girl. You know, it's just that one photo because My if they were dating. I checked the obits, nothing that would make for a likely candidate. Why would she kind of need picky for guys with photos threads to of begin other heads? Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde. Oh, yes, 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 of course it accelerates neural decay in the brain cells. After a couple days, they're useless. They're going to need something really fresh. How fresh? As fresh as possible. Buffy, you don't think that they would... I think anyone who cuts dead girls into little pieces does not get the benefit of... of baseball. At its best, it's unadorned aggression. Such a rugged contest. Rugged American football. <laughs> and that's funny because? I was thoughtless. I see that now. But I've changed. I've learned to appreciate how much it meant that you wanted to be with me. We're ready. Ready? Ready for what? You're gonna feel a little pain. He's definitely he's changed. He's area. dead. But don't worry. When you wake up, you'll have the body of a 17 year old.
Okay, so that was my reaction to Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 2, Episode 2, Some re Assembly Required. An okay episode, I'll probably give it a 7. I like that moment of Angel and Buffy and will really, I think, I'll enjoy watching their relationship develop as the series goes on. I think it uh, could be quite interesting. But yeah, as for the episode, it was just average, you know. It was very much a Frankenstein type of episode in the, you know, a Buffy type approach. So, yeah, I don't think there's much more I can say about that. Not at the moment. Uh, let's just break it down. Uh, we start off in the cemetery, uh, Angel uh, approaches Buffy, or sneaks up on her, uh, they end up fighting, you know, together Angel calls Xander a kid, but considering Buffy and Xander are pretty sure of the same age, that's like he's calling Buffy a kid as well. She's a teenager, so young adult maybe? Then, this is a funny scene where Buffy falls into the grave. Here we have Giles working on his pickup lines. Here we um, have uh, uh, Buffy and Xander sort of talking to Giles about, you know, Miss Cav Cavender, I, or it is Jenny. I'm uh, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it's Jenny. So it's nice to see, you know, Giles possibly having this relationship with someone. Here we have them mentioning about the grave that was empty last night. Here we get introduced to the uh, two boys. One's the brother of Daryl. And I'm not sure what the other one is. If he's just a friend. <clears throat> but he is someone that seriously needs to get some therapy. <clears throat> I wonder what they'll do with him after this episode. You know, off screen, whether he goes to prison or what happens to him. I guess that's sort of for us... To decide. I mean, really, for what he did, he can't really go to prison because how do you send someone to prison if you can't be open about vampires and all that sort of thing? So, yeah. I'd be interested to know what you guys think of what maybe happened to him after this episode. Here we have them sort of looking, you know, at the possibilities, maybe zombies or something else like that. Cordelia sort of coming in, asking Willow for help uh, on the science project. Xander trying to scare Cordelia a bit. Here we have um, Giles and Xander sort of digging up to see if I think it was Daryl. This is Daryl's grave. I could be mistaken about that, but yeah. Then Giles and Xander open it. They find out that there's no body in there. So yes, that must have been Daryl's uh, grave. Here we have Cordelia at the school, sort of hearing someone approach. She gets a bit Scared by that and ends up jumping in the garbage dump. Uh, and we find out it's Angel. Then we find a hand. Here we have Cordelia sort of trying to get into a relationship with Angel. That would be interesting. I'd like to see a bit of uh, jealousy between Buffy and... Cordelia regarding Angel. I don't think they'll go down that route, but they might. 
So here we're talking about the grave, you know, that it was empty. Uh, Cordelia ends up getting Angel to take her home. Then we meet the mother who seems so disconnected from reality herself. Then we're searching the lockers and we find the two suspects. Here Xander sort of makes a reference in a way to, you know, always wanting what we can't have, you know, sort of addressing that to Buffy, you know, that, yeah, I still want you, but we always, you know, we can't have what we always want. Here we have uh, Giles going to ask uh, Julie. Forgive me if I get her name wrong. i am still got to learn to remember hers. Um, you know, Giles and her, she's try and get into a relationship. And then we have it sort of more ends up the reverse. Instead of Giles asking her out on a date, she's asking Giles out on a date. And here we are in the science laboratory. Then we're down in the cellar talking about the body that they're making and all of that. And we get introduced to Daryl, who's very much like Frankenstein. Then we have him talking about, you know, needing a partner. Someone he can be with. And she, uh, he decides that it should be Cordelia's head. Here we have them in the library. And Buffy ends up going off to see the uh, Eric at his home. She meets the mother and the mother is so disconnected from reality and just watching games of his of her deceased son. Then Buffy goes downstairs, looks around, almost gets ambushed by Daryl. Then they try to kidnap Cordelia, but Buffy interferes. Chris is sort of, you know, his conscience is still there, where the other kid, you know, um, is absolutely, I don't know what where his conscience is, just that he needs some serious help. Here we have Giles on his date, um, on his date, and then Xander and Willow approach them. Then we have um, Cordelia kidnapped, and they're about to cut her up, or at least cut her head off. But Buffy then manages to come in and stop the uh, whole procedure from going ahead. Um, gasoline cans knocked over and then gets lit on fire. And the brother Daryl ends up burning alive. Basically cremated. And then they, uh, yeah, Joe's saying, oh, second day. Here we have Cordelia trying to thank Xander, but Santa and Willow are having a moment. Here we have Angel and Buffy in the graveyard, and Angel sort of comes clean about being jealous of Xander. It's interesting, I don't seem to have a problem with Angel being jealous at Xander, but I do find Xander's attitude, you know, when he's jealous, is a bit more annoying. I must admit in this episode we didn't see much of that jealousy. I, I don't actually think we saw any of that, which I'm pretty glad of. 
Okay, so that was my breakdown of Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 1 Episode 2, Some Assembly Required. Again, going to stick with a 7. Uh, I don't think there's much more to be said, except I shall see you next week, which will actually be um, Christmas week on YouTube. So it should be uploaded on the 22nd which will be, yeah, Christmas week. And I hope that you all have a good Christmas, or however you spend this time of the year. And uh, the full reaction is available on Patreon. Remember, you can get the next week's episode, or the next episode is available on Patreon, listed in the description below, as well as my social media accounts in which you can message or tag me. That's on Twitter or Facebook. That's all for now, and I hope you have a Merry Christmas, and I will see you next time. Bye.